Music can attract some extremely weird people. The passion people can feel for music allows for individuals to connect their entire being and personality to a certain artist or subculture. This has happened countless times throughout music history and still happens to this day with stan culture online, developing keyboard gangs who furiously defend their favourite artists like some sort of antisocial pack of extremely feminine wolves. Outside of the modern stan culture, fan bases mainly come in the form of groups coming together thanks to their love for a particular subculture or genre such as crusties, goths, emos, you get the picture. There is one fan base, however, that completely stands out from the rest, not just because it is entirely based on two white rappers who cover themselves in clown makeup and progressively age, but for the culture, ethics and message behind the movement, not to mention their abhorrent behavior that is actively encouraged once a year when all these freaks are gathered into a field full of degeneracy, substances, and mediocre rap music. Of course, I'm talking about Juggalos, the die-hard fanbase of Insane Clown Posse. Before we take a deep dive into the Juggalo fanbase, we first need to explore the origins and rise of Insane Clown Posse to understand why they have developed such a loyal and unique fanbase. ICP members Joseph Bruce and Joseph Utzler would meet in 1985, basing their early friendship on their common love of professional wrestling, where both individuals would practice wrestling moves in a homemade ring, alongside Utzler's brother, John. Whilst listening to rap music such as NWA, The Beastie Boys and Third Bass, immediately inspired by this music, the trio would form a rap group named JJ Boys, although did not pursue further than just one single. Instead of continuing music, they would decide to form a gang named Inner City Posse instead, which seems like a great use of their time. So great, in fact, that Bruce would actually be jailed during this time for death threats, robbery and violating probation, which led him to decide to switch to the only obvious career choice professional wrestling, where the eventual ICP members would become friendly with who would eventually become ECW standouts Rob Van Dam and Sabu. Although this wrestling venture would be short-lived as Bruce would become sick of the backstage drama and decided to start performing hip-hop at local nightclubs alongside the Utzler brothers. They would be known as ICP which stood for... Uh, inner City Posse. There ain't any clowns yet. ICP would struggle to receive airplay and found they were spending more on production than what they were earning. Due to this fact, alongside their decision to leave the gang lifestyle, they decided to switch from gangster rap to horrorcore with the lyrics thematically based on, you guessed it, horror. This would also see the introduction of the name Insane Clown Posse. This formula would prove successful and the group would begin touring, throwing Fago bottles at people's heads, dressing up as clowns if they were in juvenile detention, performing wrestling moves on stage and most importantly, using the term juggalo to refer to their fans. The term would first be used when Bruce would just randomly call the audience Juggalos whilst performing the song Juggala. For some reason this received large amounts of fanfare from the audience and the term just stuck. The term would be used for endearment by the now two members of ICP specifically being used for friends, family, and contemporary artists. And as ICP began to explode in popularity, more and more people would start referring to themselves as juggalos, and the connection they felt to each other deepened. ICP's growth also led to a few issues and criticisms, with many articles being written lampooning the artist and fan base for being offensive, as well as the artists experiencing legal issues, which mainly came in the form of them physically assaulting audience members. These may seem like negatives, but it only grew the Juggalo subculture. ICP primarily focused their music's lyrics on topics such as abuse and poverty, which in turn attracted individuals who suffered similar hardships. In 2003, a study found that the vast majority of individuals who labeled themselves as a Juggalo lived in poverty, although allowed the Juggalo subculture to assist them in embracing and making the most out of whatever dire situation they may be in. These factors have led to the Juggalos becoming a group that thrives to accept everyone, regardless of wealth, race, gender or family background. It also means they're a big fan of degeneracy, such as the previously mentioned audience member Assault. Many Juggalos label themselves as so because they're in a group they feel comfortable, full of people that are completely non-judgmental and allow each individual person to be themselves, which kind of often leads to negatives, not gonna lie, such as this or this. Despite the positive connotations I've mentioned, the FBI classified the Juggalos as a criminal street gang in 2011, and despite the common goal of Juggalos being primarily positive, the public's perception has been permanently shifted by the FBI's decision. This decision was made after criminal organizations would begin popping up and labeling themselves as Juggalos, 
committing a wide array of street gang criminal activity, including extortion, armed robbery, murder, and essentially anything else you can think of involved in street crime. They even occasionally form territories, attacking members of the public who wear ICP merch. This literally sounds like an episode of South Park. Juggalo gangs, specifically in Los Angeles, have formed connections with the Bloods. Reasons for this connection remain unknown, although it's highly likely it's simply because they wear the same colour in the same area. Despite this, experts theorise 85-90% to 90 of Juggalos are peaceful, with ICP themselves revolting against the decision with marches and lawsuits, although both will be unsuccessful and they're still seen as a gang today. Despite their consistent setbacks and criticism, ICP would continue to give back to the community. For example, in 2000, they hosted the first Gathering of the Juggalos, a three-day festival featuring wrestling, games, seminars, contests, and of course, musical performances. Since 2000, the gathering has been held pretty much every year, with some obvious exceptions. The gathering has become quite notorious since its inception, as it continues to promote the, let's say, non-judgmental approach to life jugglers have. This essentially means you can do whatever the f*** you want, as long as you scream whoop whoop and shorten your life expectancy by at least four years every time you visit. Honestly, as opposed to listening to me waffle on about a festival I've never attended, watch one of the many YouTubers who have visited and documented it for yourself. Let them suffer the demonetization instead of me. As per any group or subculture, the Juggalos have a number of symbols and terminologies they use to connect and identify with each other, one of which is literally just a drink, Fago. We don't have this shit in the UK, but apparently it's very cheap and looks like it would immediately get you addicted to corn syrup after the first sip. This would stem from an early ICP song, in which Fago was referenced. Near the release of this song, ICP would essentially use Fago as some sort of sorting tool, Harry Potter style. Bruce would throw the bottle at crowd members he hated and sprayed liquid at the crowd members he liked. Somehow this has resulted in Fago symbolizing a baptism of poverty. Another clear cut symbol is the hatchet man. The majority of individuals at the gathering will be seen donning this symbol somewhere on their body, most of the time tattooed. Obviously, just based on this symbol alone, you can probably guess the connotation, although it does go a little bit deeper than that. The symbol was originally used for promotional material for psychopathic records, although it was adopted by ICP to use as the official logo, which has led to it being seen as the unifying symbol for Juggalos. You may look at this symbol and think how the f*** does that represent the unification? Well, the official explanation, and this isn't a joke, is the man running with a hatchet represents the Juggalos' ability to run through life face the future and cut down any obstacles they may come across. Honestly, you can see why boomers think this is a f***ing gang, like just look at everything involved with it. Although Juggalos are somewhat prominent in popular culture, the gang label has dampened much of the mainstream appeal it was beginning to receive. Before 2011, Juggalos and ICP themed merchandise was beginning to see prominence in mainstream retail stores, which was completely wiped out thanks to the gang classification and the negative connotation that comes with that. In the topic of negative connotations, it's likely that some of you viewers might have originally had a somewhat negative view of the subculture, which isn't a rare opinion. Many of the members are made up of individuals who are unhealthily obsessed with what appears to be two violence-loving rappers who dress as clowns and consistently wear and promote a logo that involves what would eventually become an act of violence or at least a very dangerous and risky act akin to running with scissors. Despite this, the Juggalos do not give a single f and continue to live their lives how they want to, jumping through tables, utilizing whipped cream dispensers for their intended purpose, and whatever the f this is, the Juggalos will continue to do whatever the f they want. Which links to what I see as one of the driving forces of this subculture, our inherent desire to be free. We live in a society where everyone has to act within a certain set of rules, and individuality is only celebrated if the person is extremely attractive. The Juggalos tear down all these rules, creating an all-accepting environment without judgement. It's just a f***ing shame they choose to do what they end up doing each year instead of, I don't know, hugging and making flower necklaces. But I suppose watching a Juggalo injure themselves in increasingly creative ways is more entertaining than having to be around a hippie for literally a nanosecond.